broadcasts of Hiki No are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo, and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki No. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki No. Hawaii's new wave of storytelling. Aloha and welcome to this week's episode of Hiki no, Hawaii's new wave of storytellers. I'm Kyla Foster, an 8th grader at Kamehameha School's Maui Middle School, speaking to you from my home in Kihei. In this edition of Hiki no, we'll see how Hawaii students are dealing with life and school during the pandemic through our continuing series of student reflections. We'll visit a local company that is adding a new eco-friendly twist to shave ice. We'll continue celebrating Hiki No's 10th anniversary by looking back at some of the top stories from the program's early years. And we'll meet a highly successful digital media entrepreneur who was among the very first Hiki No graduates. But first, here is my student reflection on life during the first new school year in the COVID-19 era. I recorded it on October 20th, 2020. For me, distance learning has been a little stressful because I don't like to stare at a screen all day, but that's all we've been doing. I would much rather learn in person, especially because teachers provide a quiet place to study and I get to see my friends. Now that we're home learning all day, there's many distractions and it's super noisy around my house. My mom has gotten super overwhelmed and doesn't exactly know how to help us. All in all, it's been a bad situation. Because of how hard it was to focus at home, my dad came home from work one day and had the brilliant idea to get each me and my siblings our own hotspots. My mom took us to different places around Maui and all we do is turn it on and work. Because of this, distance learning has been much more peaceful and more relaxing, but not only that, we also get to learn about different areas around our island. Some of the places that we've studied at are Kula, Lahaina, and Wailea, and I definitely look forward to studying around more areas. Though distance learning was stressful at first, I thank my parents for coming up with a creative solution. Through my experience, I've found that distance learning isn't that bad after all. It's just what you make of it. Now, from Waiakea High School on Hawaii Island, here's a story about a new eco-friendly twist to a longtime favorite island refreshment. When they're presented with something that has artificial colors in it, they see they don't feel they don't feel good after they eat it, and then so next time they're presented with it, they're like, "Dad, this has artificial colors. We don't want to eat this." Located in central downtown Hilo, a small family-based business does its best to promote healthy and happy living. After being introduced to Shave Ice by a family friend, Luke Golden decided to try his hand at this island favorite. Every day I'd try and feed myself healthy and feed my kids healthy stuff because you are what you eat and you don't want to build, build a body out of poison. <laughs> so most places you go to will just use uh, sugar syrup off the shelf, which is not even really made from sugar. And it's made from a lot of coloring, artificial dyes, flavorings, preservatives, all the stuff's bad for you. So we wanted to give something back to the community and to the keiki. We have local farmers that we source a lot of our fruit from. We use all organic fruit, all organic sugar, and we make everything from scratch. With business booming, Kula Shave Ice is expanding its focus on how they can help generations to come. 
The owners, Luke and Tiffany Golden, really try their hardest to minimize how much like trash we're producing as a company, like how much waste we're producing. They really try to go out of their way to um, kind of get everyone in the community involved. The state of the world, I think every, everyone should be on, on board with this, you know. Just too much plastic, too much, too much everything going into the ocean. Yeah, we compost everything that we use, all our scraps, and then we have compostable bowls, cups, spoons. Although their eco-friendly efforts are appreciated by the community, doing the right thing isn't always easy. The cost of doing business this way is way higher, so we're actually going to have to raise our prices this year, a dollar. Pretty much everything is going to go up a dollar. It's just how it is, like, got to stay afloat. While keeping the tight budget in mind, Kula's stays true to its family-oriented roots by using all tips. For um, my children's college fund and for the college fund for there's one girl that works for us is paying off her student loans and one girl's going to college to be a nurse. So that's for that. I would say that it's definitely one of the best jobs I've ever had where I actually feel like a part of a company as opposed to just like a replaceable piece. The sustainable wisdom Luke is passing on to his family and community is helping build a healthier and cleaner future for the youth, their parents, and everyone in between. This is Katie McCleary from Waiakea High School for Hiki No. Shortly after the story was shot, the coronavirus pandemic was announced. Most local businesses in Hilo, including Kula Shave Ice, were forced to shut down indefinitely. Obviously, the shutdown at the end of March affected the family business and income, but owners Luke and Tiffany Golden used the time away from work to improve their business and sustainability efforts. Since their reopening on June 1st, the business has been trying their best to stay alive and support fellow local businesses. Hi, this is Sora Chang, a senior at Kalaheo High School on the island of Oahu. I am recording this at my home on October 20th, 2020. Due to COVID, a shutdown is enforced to reduce the spread of the disease. This in turn means that students have been forced to stay at home and continue our education online. During a typical school day, you just sit there watching lecture after lecture on a screen, which makes it very easy to lose motivation. In addition, handwriting things or engaging in interactive classes helped me retain the information I was learning in class, yet distance learning doesn't utilize any of these key components. Recently, I signed a petition specific to Call a Hail for students to have a voice in the way we receive our education. Some solutions that correspond with COVID laws would be to have in-person student assistance by appointment only, which would limit the amount of people in a room. Despite these hard times, I know we are all searching for solutions to help all of us. Hopefully change will occur and we can move forward to have an amazing senior year. And now, commemorating the 10th anniversary of Hiki No, coming up in February of 2021, here's the second video in a series of profiles on outstanding Hiki no alumni. When we're in the story finding process for our first Hiki no package, we, we didn't know what we wanted. All, all we knew was there were so many stories done on athletes or, you know, the, the school and, you know, it, it was oversaturated. We wanted to try and like expand and do something different. So um, when we were story finding, we had a lot of great stories and different ideas. But when we heard of Jacob's story, it, it really stood out because it, it's something that not everyone experiences, but I think on a certain level, people can connect to that. It was a real life story, which we thought was very impactful because it, we, we were to tell the story of a teenage father and how he manages um, the situation. The biggest struggle in my life was probably adapting to, you know, being a new father and having someone depend on me. You know, being, you know, a senior in high school, and having to break away from my friends so I could get a full-time job to pay for my son and everything I need and to live here on my own. When we were working with Hikino, it was like taking it to the next level. You know, we were able to connect with industry professionals and we were able to get notes from them and, you know, it was a lot of revisions. It was more than I was used to. Just getting back and forth comments on, you know, hey, fix this. 
um, adjust this, and then I think I even had to go back and reshoot. Do I want to quit my job? Every day. Every day. <laughs> but do I want to quit being a, a father or a, and a provider? No. It's, it's a great feeling. It's, it's probably the best feeling I've ever had, you know? The happiest day of my life was the day Sean was born, you know? Uh, it's my son, you know, so it's it's an amazing thing. So that was probably, that was actually definitely the greatest day of my life. Growing up, I was always around media. My dad did commercial work and a lot of news stories for the Vietnamese community. So I was always around, um, you know, cameras and editing and all that. So I fell in love with media. And then throughout the years, I also developed a passion for medicine. So. Even in high school and through college, I, I studied to be a doctor, but at the same time, I still continue my, my craft in media. And you know, at one point, it was really hard to juggle both the, the media side of things and then um, trying to like study for med school and all that. So I, I kind of had an epiphany moment and was like, hey, you know, you can't do two things. You just got to pick one and focus on it. So in 2016, I, I, I did a show and we won an Emmy. And I think after that, I was just like, hey, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what I'm in love with, and this is what I wanna continue for the rest of my life. So I, 2016, I went full lawn, committed to owning my own business and um, doing filmmaking and creative services full time. So and, and I don't regret anything and it's, it's been amazing since. Um, you know, after we started the company, our, our work was noticed by a, a lot of people. And so we were able to work with Hawaiian Airlines, First Hawaiian Bank, Serve coal, um, just to name a few. So I mean like, broken down to like the most basic thing, I, I'm a storyteller at heart and being able to, you know, Started in high school, broadcast journalism, I, I found my passion for storytelling and through, you know, these stories and these packages and and it, it's, it's nice to be able to do that at a, you know, um, as a career. Hi, this is David Brayman, a seventh grader from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. I'm speaking to you from our campus as our media class competes in a virtual contest. We are making sure to stay safe and socially distanced. The first semester of our school year has been all online. I have tried to look at this with a positive attitude and use this time to help out in my community. One thing I like to do is make masks for people who need them. I iron fabric that's been donated, my mom cuts it, then we send it to another person who sews it into a mask. I also distribute food with several organizations. I've done a variety of jobs, like packing bags, organizing donations, and handing out food. Once a week, I volunteer at a local food pantry. I bring our families extra food and help out by scooping rice into little bags for people to pick up. I encourage everyone to help in their communities and stay safe. If we all pitch in and treat each other with aloha, we will get through this together. Continuing our celebration of 10 years of Hikino, here's a story from my school, Chiefest Kamakahele Middle, that aired in the very first episode on February 28, 2011, and set the bar for balanced reporting. For as long as anyone can remember, high school football games on Kauai have been played at night. So, it's unusual to be playing a game under the sun rather than under the lights. But as of the 2010 KIF football season, the County of Kauai has decided that the traditional Friday night football games be moved to Saturday afternoon. But why? It's because of this little guy, the Nuo Shearwater, an endangered species found only on Kauai. These birds are unique and they're very special to Kauai and that comes with a responsibility. So we need to work together to protect them and make sure that they're here for future generations to come. The bright football lights can confuse the birds when they're on their first flight out to sea and they can crash into the ground and sometimes they'll die. Because their population is declining so rapidly, we need to do everything we can to prevent this from happening. But others may not agree. They look forward to their senior season in the lights with a full crowd of fans, band playing, 
you know, the fans behind them, and that was all taken away. And we have day games, which is in the hot sun. Our fans are half here, half gone. In my opinion, I like the nighttime games better only because it's more comfortable to watch the game. I have to ask off from my workplace, and that's income that I need to take care of my family here. Although it would be easy to point fingers, Mayor Bernard Carvalho can't do much about it. We have various amounts of uh, night activity. So the biggest issue is coming up with a plan to address uh, the lighting at night, which means that, number one, for some facilities, we would have to actually turn off the lights. And in this case, the price to pay is Friday night football. If we choose to continue the Friday night games, the county has to pay a different kind of price. Otherwise, we could be um, charged with paying for each bird that is injured or falls from the sky due to the lights at $10,000 per bird. Hopefully it's not permanent. Uh, we want to make sure that we offer every opportunity for our families and, and our players to play at night. I know it's so exciting at night, but we need to be very responsible and we're trying our best to make it sure that we are following the, the laws that are before us. Well, it's not really a black and white issue. It's not, can we have football or can we have birds? I think we all need to work together and find a solution to the problem. Currently, the county of Kauai is searching for that solution. But until they find it, the lights will remain off for football on Kauai. This is Lorinda Sasan from Chief Kamakahele Middle School for Hikino. I'm Kai Sugawa, a fifth grader at Waikiki Elementary School on the island of Hawaii. I'm recording this at my home on October 7, 2020. Due to COVID-19, there have been many changes. Our kupuna are affected because they need someone to take care of them. As my grandparents get older, they have a harder time taking care of themselves, especially when you toss in a COVID-19 pandemic. This change affects many of our kupuna. Is it a good change or a bad change? The hardest part of my life is to not know if my grandparents are doing okay. How can I take care of all my grandparents if I have a hard time seeing them or visiting them? It makes me worry not to know if my grandparents are doing okay. It's hard to take care of someone when you can't really see them because that's not taking care of them at all. I don't want my grandparents to get infected, so we try to avoid going to the supermarket and going back to their house. One day, I hope I can visit them so that I know that they are safe. I hope in the future, a vaccine comes so this pandemic could end and I don't have to worry about my grandparents being in danger. Okay, okay, bye. As we continue a look back at 10 years of Hiki No, here is a story from the first season by students at Kapolei High School on Oahu about a football player who inspired his team after he was no longer able to play. Playing on the Kapolei High School varsity football team was his life. 6'2", 245-pound defensive end freshman Papu Uti was living his dream. Until one day, after school, while playing a game of pickup football, his dreams were shattered. My name is uh, Papu Uti. I'm a junior attending Kapolei High School on the day of March 19, 2009, my freshman year. Uh, I got into what you call a freak accident. During a game of pickup football, Papu suffered a devastating blow to his left leg. The left foot that he planted in the mud was injured when he was tackled. The extent of the injury caused that leg to become amputated. Uh, he's an inspirational player to many of the students here, not only uh, student athletes, but just students in general. Uh, I think because of his ability to overcome adversity, he's been in an accident and he lost his lower left leg and uh, it was amputated. And for a whole year he was on crutches and now he has a prosthetic leg and he has not allowed that to stop him. He has really shown a lot of character in his ability to 
come back and uh, work hard. Current thing I'm doing right now is uh, basically football training, getting better, trying to strengthen myself, not only in sports but in school as well. He's very committed to what he does uh, on the football field uh, this past year. He was not able to play, but he still was able to contribute just in the way that he carried himself being a vocal leader and that was very important to our team. In all my years of football, <clears throat> I never had a kid with more heart and more, uh, who was more inspirational than Papu Uti. It has been a big change. It made a huge impact in my life. Papu has undergone physical therapy and training to prepare for his future. He vows to be playing football in the upcoming season with a prosthetic leg. This is Joshua Saludis from Kapolei High School, reporting for Hikino. Aloha, I'm Kailani Ibanez and I'm a sophomore at H.P. Baldwin High School on Maui. And I'm recording this from my home on October 8th, 2020. When we first started quarantine, I was excited. My first year of high school had been extremely stressful for me, especially towards the end of third quarter. And being able to finish my freshman year from the comforts of home was a huge relief to me. When quarantine first began, I mainly just did the virtual homework I got from school and relaxed in my room. But as the months went by and distance learning for the new school year began, I realized that during quarantine, I actually hadn't tried any of the things I had always wanted to do. It's stuff like trying to learn the ukulele, practicing painting, drawing, or even embroidery, which is something I wanted to learn for years. But as my responsibilities towards school grow, I know that I'm running out of free time. However, I know that if I set aside at least a little bit of time each week to work on these hobbies, I can start a habit of consistently doing something that makes me happier and helps to cultivate the skills I want to. And like everyone else who has had to adjust to staying at home, I just have to keep trying, one day at a time. Now as a part of our celebration of the upcoming 10th anniversary of Hikino, let's take a look at a story from Kamehameha School's Kapa'alama, which aired in the very first episode and proved that student journalists could explore their school's past controversies with balance and objectivity. I just had a hard time at the job. I just got cut. When faced with adversity, do you run for cover or weather the storm? Inspired by the book Wayfinding Through the Storm, Speaking Truth to Power, a new course at Kamehameha Schools delves into the trusty controversy of the 1990s, focusing on the impact to the school and its students. When trustee misconduct jeopardized Bishop Estate's nonprofit status, the controversy erupted into a huge blowout that made national headlines and resulted in the resignations of all five trustees. I'd say that from the time that the old trustees left until now, we've been doing very well in uh, trying to control our actions for the good. Part of the healing process for some of the teachers and staff was to share their experiences in the book, which was released in 2009. The Wayfinding Through the Storm book was one of our summer reading books. And so after kind of getting engaged in like the text and just the people and the voices and then kind of thinking about my schedule for my senior year, you know, I thought being here for 12 years and making this my 13th, I should really know my school better. And reading the book was one step, but taking the class was like, a whole new adventure. The class offers a unique learning experience. Rather than just recounting events, guest speakers who experience the controversy firsthand give insight and context into the tumultuous times. The class serves as a living lesson about the power of standing up for one's beliefs and taking action. We've created this course and it's a course that we think is going to change things. You don't just, you know, stand up, stand out, become a little rebellious for what you believe in, but it has to go somewhere. At the end of the semester, students were compelled to take action and decided to create a petition for student rights to present to the administration. I signed the petition because I wanted the administration to hear our viewpoints and opinions and to take what we had to say into consideration when making important decisions for the school. Like, I think the class really gave me a voice and it really taught me how to stand up for what I believe in. 
The powerful lesson learned by students in this course has led to an unexpected demand to offer it again this semester. This unique opportunity allows students to learn about their past in order to pave a way for a brighter future for Kamehameha. This is Shea Kawe from Kamehameha Schools Kapalama for Hiki no. Thank you for watching this episode of Hiki no, Hawaii's new wave of storytellers. Be sure to join us next week for more student reflections on school and life as we persevere through the year 2020. Plus, we'll continue our look back at 10 years of Hiki no can do. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no.